Hey fam, this is your weekly roundup of scary shit to watch on YouTube. Let's start off with the top seven absolutely scary ghost videos caught on camera that are freaking out everyone by the channel Scary Pills. Dude, from the first freaking clip. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Number one. Not your shadows. आज की पहली वीडियो दो दोस्तों ने मिलकर किसी हॉन्टेड एंड अबेंडेंट बिल्डिंग में रिकॉर्ड करी थी एंड इस वीडियो में ये लोग कुछ काफी क्रीपी कैच भी कर लेते हैं देखिए जरूर एक बार Then we move over to Bizarre Bub. <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> This is Scary Comp V42. Dude, there's a clip involving chairs that I was like, what the, wait, uh, what? No, no, like, I don't think it's true. I think that there was somebody else there. This is how I sleep at night, fam. But that was well done. That was really fucking well done. So, the following footage shows a security guard who's patrolling a school late at night when something downright terrifying is caught on camera. John McPrince, who suggested the video, writes, "The video is located in the Philippines and takes place at a school that is rumored to have been a cemetery before. A security guard for the school hears strange noises coming from inside a classroom and sees this. This is what he caught." Check natin yung nakabano guys. So guys, narinig mo yun? Check natin guys kung ano yung surabi yung balhibo guys. Check natin. So ayan yung pinto na kung malabog. Check natin guys. Yun, narinig ko ngayon guys na naka-on yung naka-on yung ano. Yan. Yun guys, so, yung kita niyo yung mga bangko. Guys. Yan, walang tao diyan guys ha. Tapos yung yung electric fan sa itaas. Then we have IMR Scary Tales with Orphanage Horror Stories Animated. We got a lot of animated horror stories going on these days, don't we? I don't mind. I like it. And this one, I'm pretty sure these are like creepy pastas, basically. I don't think they're true, and I don't think it claims to be true. Do you claim to be true? These are creepy pastas. It has the authors in the description. Um, and damn, fucking. Damn, it just pops off, fam. Now, I knew I wasn't the reason why I hadn't been adopted, as there was nothing wrong with me or any of the other kids at the orphanage. But as I grew older, I came to realize that the Blue Saints Orphanage had gotten a reputation, and it wasn't a good one, as it was dubbed the Cursed Orphanage. There were numerous reasons pertaining to why the orphanage was called this, but the major reason for the nasty nickname was because the numerous potential parents who came to adopt a child always met a lethal accident when leaving or arriving at the orphanage. From horrendous car crashes to mysterious falls from the high balconies in the orphanage, no one came out of the place alive. Then we move on to get out. Then we move on to a little pop-up. MJV Animations and Two Scary Roommate Horror Stories Animated. They say you shouldn't move in with your best friend. I kind of agree with that because that's who I moved in with straight out of high school. And we didn't really talk for a while afterwards. But she was also really fucking uptight. Like she was one of those, you finish using the dish, you wash it now. I'm just way too chill for that shit. I will get to it. Don't worry, I'm a Virgo. But it's not right the fuck now because I got some dancing to do, okay? Priorities. 
and then um yeah this is just me stalling because i don't want to think about that shit. <laughs> within three to four days we finalized the deal and she shifted to my place i lived in the roadside bedroom connected to the fire exit annie's room was across the hall on the left she said she was a struggling artist hence she would prefer a quiet corner of the apartment even though we had separate rooms we hung out together often we watched movies late at night drank and went out to grab a bite almost every other day. I never saw Annie going out with anyone else. I even asked her about her friends and family to which she replied she grew up in a foster home and does not have anyone to call her family. I was in the exact same space after my grandma's death, so I felt bad for her. Then we have three true scary Starbucks horror stories in the channel Anna Horror Stories. Anna puts out a lot of fucking shit, like, so highly recommend. I had just started my freshman year at University of the Arts. I was studying photography and I was quite excited about it since I had always been a keen photographer. And I was excited to take it to the next step beyond Instagram. But like any bachelor, it costs a fortune. So I had to work somewhere while I studied. Starbucks was the obvious choice as I could have a flexible schedule and work part-time around my school hours. Plus, being a famous chain and everything, I figured it would be more reliable than a local cafe. I guess I was wrong. And then, bam, ugh. Anytime that people do like live streams, whether you're on YouTube or Twitch or something, it really fucking freaks me out that so many people don't seem to think like, can you get out of your own neighborhood, please? You're like walking around and shit. You're driving around and showing street names. I don't want to see that shit. I never want to see that shit because the wrong person will eventually see that shit. And I don't want that to happen to you. Nobody has time for that. Okay. None. Zero. Fuck that. One of my biggest fears about something like OnlyFans, actually at least two, because this is two true OnlyFans Horror stories animated are pretty, it's, they're, oh. These are, so, these ones are supposedly true. And I just, my heart, my heart, I can't, like, I worry about you. Can you please just be careful? But of course I took the picture for him and sent it, again behind a $5 paywall. He made a couple more requests, each time paying me five bucks. Easy money, I thought. One of me in high heels, one of me in such and such a position, etc. Then he sent me another request, this time for ten dollars. Add me on Instagram. He included his account name in the message. Ten bucks just to add a guy on Instagram? Sure, why not? I hadn't updated my Insta for over a year and only had a couple of posts on there anyway. I took his ten dollars and added him. Strange. There weren't any posts on his account, but the circle around his blank profile picture was highlighted, meaning he had recently added to his Instagram story. Just out of curiosity, I clicked on it to see what he had posted. It was a video of my house, posted two hours ago, taken from the woods just outside. Then we have my animated scary stories and three Desolate area animated horror stories. I love camping. Do you love camping? I love camping. That's one of the wonderful things about being in the Pacific Northwest, besides the fact that it's a clusterfuck around Seattle now. Know that before you move up here. But this shit, this shit right here, this, uh, I'm a horror fan. I'm a horror writer and I have an overactive imagination. No, please. No. I can't. I fucking can't. I just. After exploring the downstairs and basement area of the house and finding nothing interesting, we headed for the stairs, reaching the top. We were faced with four doors, each locked, with not one, not two, but three sliding bolt locks on the outside of each door. That's weird. Why would these doors need to be locked so securely from the outside? And then I came across another OnlyFans story thing by, uh, Mort... These are all terrifying. I don't care who does the video. They're all terrifying stories and I don't like it. 
I don't like it. I wish better for you and me. Man started asking questions like, what STDs do I have? And at this point, I just quit the chat. I continued with my night and went to sleep not thinking much of it. There are plenty of weirdos online and this man could have just been another one of them. That next day, I had just gotten home from class. The bus was a bit late and so was I. I opened up my laptop in order to start my night job, if you will. I noticed my OnlyFans had a series of unread messages from John underscore Doe, the same weirdo from last night. I was hesitant to open them at first, but I did. It was a series of manic, crazy messages. It started off with him offering large sums of money just to talk to me, and then it transitioned to him getting very aggressive and making threats to track me down and attack me just because I ignored him. I had finally had enough. I reported the man to OnlyFans and blocked him. No amount of money was worth his attention, and I eventually just called it a night. I never heard back from John underscore Doe those next few days. Things went on considerably normal until one afternoon. It was around 4pm and I was in my apartment. I was in the kitchen and I needed some fresh air so I went outside my balcony to take a few deep breaths. But as I surveyed around the view, I noticed one of my neighbors on their balcony. This obviously wasn't particularly weird, but I noticed he was staring right at my building. It was an old man, looking at me in a somewhat intense or anxious manner. I waved to him as a friendly gesture, but received no reply. That's weird, I thought, but then things got even weirder. The man pulled out a pair of binoculars and stared at me, and then proceeded to scan up and down my building with his binoculars. I was extremely unsettled by this. It was like he was looking for someone. Could it be me? Why would this man be spying on me? And if you would like a palate cleanser this round, maybe another round, I don't know. We have top fives video, 15 bizarre and scary plants you never knew existed. I mean, I knew, I knew about most of them. Did you know about most of them? I knew about most of them, but it's still interesting as hell. There's one in particular that you would think would be poisonous as fuck and really just mess you up. And it's really not that bad. It just looks really fucking freaky. <laughs> like it's bleeding or something. I was like, that's fungus. <laughs> Woo! Well, that's not where I was aiming. How many plants are certainly pretty to look at? There are many that look absolutely horrifying in all sorts of different ways. So join us for today's video as we take a look at the top 15 most horrifying and scary plants. Number 15, Strangle Tear. The first entry on our list may not look like a big deal, but the plant known as the strangled tear can do a good amount of damage. Luckily for all of us, though, it's not harmful to humans, but its motives are still sinister. So there you go. <laughs> Stuff that you have no business watching in the middle of the night, but when else would I watch that shit? I don't know. So did anything this week scare the poop out of you? sound off in the comments because i want to watch that shit too <laughs> until next time and beyond please take care i'm trying this way. <laughs>